...formed perhaps one of the UK's biggest ever heists. The sums involved are reckoned to have run into the tens of millions of pounds, far more than the great train robbery and the Brinks Map bullion raid combined. Matthew has the inside story of how the Flying Squad surveillance operation culminated in a very dramatic raid by armed officers. Hi, Leonard. Huh? It was going to be one of the biggest robberies in British history. All right, that's two minutes. There's no doubt in my mind that this will be the Great Train Robbery and the Bricks Mac Robbery put together. This is the remarkable story of how a major criminal organisation plotted an audacious heist to steal tens of millions of pounds in gold bullion and cash. But what they hadn't banked on was detectives from the Flying Squad being one step ahead of them, all thanks to a map drawn on the side of a van. In 2002, there was a serious epidemic of armed criminality in and around Heathrow Airport. That was thefts from uh, warehouses, bonded warehouses, lorry hijackings that were being committed by about 200 to 300 criminals that lived in that community around Heathrow Airport. To catch the ringleaders, Scotland Yard's elite flying squad needed information. The first big breakthrough was when the baggage handler was arrested and came forward as a super grasp. Well, the guys you need to be looking for, they all live in the Stanwell area, so they know the airport on the back of their hand. It's all very well. What we need is names. The key name that came through from the information he provided was a man by the name of John Beach. John Beach is the guy you need to be looking for. Beach worked as a van driver in Stanwell near Heathrow. We decided to put him under close surveillance to see what both he and his associates were doing. It was imperative to identify his network and then to piece together what it is they're planning to commit. Beach's key friend were Martin Nolan, who I considered as his lieutenant, and Chris Smith, who would be the right-hand man for Martin Nolan. We realised that they were planning something, but we just could not identify the premises, and we needed to establish exactly where it was going to be. But then the undercover surveillance team filmed something extraordinary. Martin Nolan sketched a map on the side of a van. We looked at the footage over and over again. There's the van about. Yeah, it looks just the same as the map. And then suddenly realised that it was actually the routes around the Swissport depot. Swissport it is. It was a tremendous feeling. We were now in a position where we were one step ahead of the opposition. But now the flying squad faced a dilemma. If they tried to catch the gang red-handed, somebody could get hurt. You have to imagine the worst scenario, and that is that they are armed and willing to use those firearms. But if they arrested the gang before the heist, there wouldn't be enough evidence to guarantee stiff prison sentences. We really wanted to put these suspects away for a long time. You bet you know. Our choice was to obtain the best evidence and catch them red-handed. Finally, in early 2004, the flying squad started planning an ambush. Delivery comes through here, through the main gates. Their tactics needed to be perfect. Gold gets dropped just inside the doorway here. They had to guarantee the safety of the depot workers, but without alerting them to the impending heist. Detectives now knew where the robbery would take place, but not when. Then a crucial piece of information came in to change all that. It was a startling discovery. This is the most interesting bit. The depot was due to receive huge cash and gold deliveries the following Monday. Could this be when the gang was planning to strike? I've got this little job coming up. Interesting? Good man, yeah? Yeah. I'm in touch. If the robbers were successful, it would have been the biggest robbery this country had ever seen.
On the morning of the 17th of May, we had over 100 officers deployed in and around Heathrow Airport. I was positioned just outside the depot, communicating with all the officers and obviously watching what was happening. By 9am, the cash had been delivered to the warehouse and the security van carrying more than three tonnes of gold was on the way. But one thing remained a mystery. Just how was the gang going to carry out the crime? As police waited, the arrival of a white van looked perfectly innocent. But unknown to them, the driver used forged paperwork to pass through security. In there, boys. And in the back you ready for this, yeah? were Chris Smith and his hired muscle. The robbers were in the car park in their van. What they didn't know was just metres away in another van was my team of armed officers. The irony was that neither of them knew either were there. The two groups of men waited. The police for the robbers to strike. The robbers for the gold to be unloaded. What right, boys, this is it. What's up? Come on. happened next stunned the police. First we knew on the day that we were game on is when the villains reversed their van through the shutters into the red. The robbers got out from the back of the van. Some of them went straight for the gold and started to load it onto the van. Others went into the vault area where they threatened the custodian. To get his keys to get to the cash. I realised that this was it. Attack, attack, attack! We immediately deployed the firearms officers, and that is when speed, stealth, and surprise wins the day. At that stage, most of the staff were in a state of shock. The overriding objective is to dominate, control, and arrest them. The wheels of their vehicles are always shut out to make sure they're immobilised. Minutes after the armed officers went into the warehouse, I walked in. Job well done. It was a moment of elation. We knew that these men were going to go away for a long time once convicted. But one man remained at large. John Beach, the gang's leader, had tried to keep his hands clean by not taking part in the heist itself. But the net around him was tightening. Hello. What? Shortly after the robbery, John Beach was seen to get a phone call. Well, ambush. He appeared angry and agitated. Don't phone me on this phone, all right? Yeah? We believe he got a call from another gang member telling him his whole plan had been ruined. Convinced he played a significant part in the robbery, Beach was later arrested and found guilty at trial. He and his associates were jailed for a total of 83 years. With the gang locked up, the impact on crime in the area was immediate. Following the arrest of the gang, crime around Heathrow Airport was reduced by about 80%. It really was a high-profile success story. Tremendously satisfying. And all because of a map sketched and the slang of a van. Extraordinary. Um, uh, 
pretty ambitious trap that the police set. Yeah, a real high-risk strategy, waiting for the gang to make their move. I, I know commanders agonised over that decision, but they'd swamped the area. They'd staked out the whole route the gold would take from the airport to the depot, because, of course, they didn't know where exactly the hit would be made. But the plan worked. I mean, this was the front page of the mirror the next day. I remember that. Look at that, caught red-handed, this one of the gang, in front of a mountain of gold, but for, for police there would have been no room for error, no margin for error here. Yeah, I mean, you say a mountain of gold, really big bucks here we're talking about. Yeah, 40 million in gold bullion, up to 40 million in cash, so absolutely massive. But these were career criminals. Beach, the mastermind here, he pulled off another heist at Heathrow two years earlier. In that raid, he got airside on the tarmac. Currency had been taken off a plane. They got away with six and a half million dollars. That money has never been traced, but he throws his patch, you see. Beach had worked there as a baggage handler and he used his bent contacts in that previous raid, in this raid, to actually get around that tight, tight security. How easy is it, I'm wondering, Matthew, to get rid of 40 million pounds worth of gold once you've nabbed it? Well, through official channels, difficult, because each gold bar is registered, it has a special number on it, but if a gang has the right equipment, a furnace, to melt down the gold, to recast it, then it becomes much easier to get rid of it on the black market, much easier than getting rid of banknotes, for example, or diamonds, but, you know, this sort of delivery of gold in a truck on a road, I mean, it, it's quite rare. Most of the trading between banks, it's, it's done on paper. The gold never moves out of the vaults. That's why this gang targeted this particular shipment, because as a smash and grab, it doesn't get much bigger than this, but as a police bust, it doesn't get much better. I'm always learning when you talk to me. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, now